Well, come on in, little sister. Y'all can sit down and get something to eat. Just some bread. Y'all kick off y'all's coat. The new Breakfast for Children program soon attracted the attention of the FBI. Claiming the program served to indoctrinate children, the Bureau directed field offices to, quote, formulate specific counterintelligence techniques to disrupt this nefarious activity, unquote. The FBI stepped up its efforts to recruit blacks to infiltrate the Black Panther Party. My recruitment by the FBI was very efficient, very simple, really. Um, I'd stolen a car and uh, went joyriding over the state limit. And um, they had a potential case against me, and I was looking for an opportunity to uh, work it off. And um, a couple of months later, that opportunity came when uh, uh, FBI agent Roy Mitchell asked me to uh, go down to the local office of the Black Panther Party and try to uh, gain membership. I think everyone that was in the Black Panther Party kind of understood it was a given that we would have wiretaps, that we would be followed, that we would be harassed, we'd be locked up, that we would even be beaten by the police. In the winter of 1969, law enforcement agencies launched efforts to undermine an attempted coalition between the Black Panther Party and the Blackstone Rangers, a Chicago gang. The Panthers were pursuing a, an ideology that said, we need to take these young minds, this young energy, and, and turn it into part of our movement in terms of black liberation and the rest of it. And, and I saw a very purposeful, intentional uh, effort on the part of the police department to keep that head from ho hooking up to that body. It was like, you know, do not let this thing become a part of what could ultimately be a political movement, because that's exactly what it was. FBI agents wrote an anonymous letter to Jeff Fort, the leader of the Blackstone Rangers, warning Fort that the Panthers have, quote, a hit out for you, unquote. The Bureau knew that the information was false, but believed that Fort might take retaliatory action against the Panthers. Meanwhile, city officials announced a crackdown on gangs. Did you say that street gangs can do no good? Is that what you would say? That's no, I wouldn't say that. I think that the uh, energy of youth uh, properly directed could be a tremendous betterment, could lead to a tremendous betterment of our city and the individual's uh, progress themselves. This is uh, I'm complaining about the misdirection. I'm complaining about the fact that uh, 620 out of 693 shooting victims uh, are black themselves, and I think that's a tragedy. That is where black genocide is occurring here. The Chicago police expanded their anti-gang campaign to include the Black Panther Party. In late May, Fred Hampton was sent to prison. He had been convicted on a charge of stealing $71 worth of ice cream bars. We tried to develop negative information to discredit him, just like we did... Uh, Everybody else, we, meaning the FBI, I tried to come up with uh, signs of him doing drugs or, or something, and uh, never could. He was clean. He was dedicated. I've had private conversations with him. Uh, we got along pretty well. While Fred Hampton was in prison, a police raid on the Panther office turned into a shootout. Five policemen and three Panthers were wounded. They did it. That's they got the brothers down. They went back up there and the fire started. Nobody, nobody was up there except the, the police when the right fire right started. Right right right. Frank, you want to come? Get a picture there, too. Check that door, man. Let me back and drive shotgun. They um, shot up the door at the office there, arrested some Panthers. And um, just to show you the, the nature, uh, uh, of, of the raiding officers there. Uh, they um, burned boxes of cereal that we had on the third floor. I mean, they deliberately set fire to that. They didn't set fire to the second floor. They set fire to the third floor with all the, you know, and was, that was kind of indicative of what they were thinking and how they were moving. The idea of the part of the police was to psych the community out. They call me up the next day. I says, is the office open? Well, no, the police boarded the place up. I say, open it back up. You got the lease to the place. What? I says, open it up. Take all that boarding down, paint that place, 
and the Black Panther Party members start working for a couple of days. The next thing you know, the community start bringing wood, paint, and everything, and open that Black Panther Party office right back up. And of course, this was an attempt to terrorize us out of existence. At the same time, if, they, if we would close down, it would leave the black community saying, well, they stopped them. In a report made public in the summer of 1969, FBI Director Hoover declared the Black Panther Party the number one threat to the internal security of the United States. I think, frankly, that he overstated the, uh, the concern, the, the, the real concern, that the Black Panthers were to the country. Uh, uh, I think it was legitimate for him to state that uh, they were a violent and unlawful element. But uh, referring to them as the most dangerous or most important, and I don't remember exactly the words he used, the greatest threat to, to the United States at that time, I think, was an overstatement. The police community is a, sort of a built-in reward and punishment system of its own. And you get a lot of rewards when you, when you go after who the boss says is the bad guy and you get him. And I think what um, J. Edgar Hoover was able to do was to give police officers the impression that it was okay. It was open season. You didn't have to worry about uh, the law. You didn't have to worry about the difference in uh, the executive branch of government and the judicial branch of government. Um, I think what he, in effect, said is, is, is it's our ball game, guys. We've got the authority. Uh, uh, we have the capacity. Uh, let's crush him. Panther leader Fred Hampton was still in prison, but efforts were underway to appeal his conviction. We were successful, and we got him out of jail towards the end of that summer because a uh, Supreme Court justice in the state of Illinois looked at what kind of a person he was, looked at the kind of case it was, and gave him a appeal bond. That's the first time I saw Fred Hampton, and I was in a young white student in a predominantly uh, black uh, church, full to the rafters, uh, welcoming Fred Hampton back. Okay, you can put your hands down now. We say all power to all people. Oh. We say white power to white people. White power to white people. Brown power to brown people. Brown power to brown people. Yellow power to yellow people. Yellow power to yellow people. Black power to black people. Black power to black people. Power we to go out, we drive along to some schoolyard or something, and there are like 200, 300 people waiting there for Fred to show up. And the phenomenal part was that, I mean, these are all people from the streets, I mean, who are not going to get up and go to work or anything else, and never had no discipline, and never would. But there they were. It was 6, 6 30 in the morning, freezing Chicago weather. And Fred would have them out there doing push-ups and jumping jacks and getting themselves energized for the, the, uh, the day's work, which included making the breakfast, which included selling papers, which included working in a medical clinic, which included a bunch of stuff. It was a very day-to-day -day kind of a thing, the Black Panther Party. And you'd have Fred out there rallying them, and he'd say, he say, he'd say, he said, all right, all right, all right, power to the people. Everybody said, power to the people. He'd say, he'd say, now, uh, I'm not going to die on no airplane. They'd say, no. I'm not going to die slipping on no ice. they say, no. He said, I'm going to die for the people because I'm going to live for the people. they say, right on. He said, I'm going to live for the people because I love the people. they say, right on. He'd say, I love the people. Why? And they say, because we're high on the people, because we're high on the people. And that was Fred Hampton. When you saw this, this was 21 years old. It was unbelievable. You could not not be moved by Fred Hampton. In the fall of 1969, Chicago was the scene of a controversial trial. The defendants were leaders of the anti-war demonstrations that had taken place during the Democratic Party convention. National Panther chairman Bobby Seale insisted on speaking in his own defense. On October 29th, trial judge Julius Hoffman ordered Seale bound and gagged. This is a symbol to every one of us. Black men in our courts are gagged. Black men in our courts do not feel as though there is any justice. Black men in our courts, whenever case they come, feel that judges do not understand and are without mercy. Two weeks later, a gun battle on Chicago's south side further escalated tensions. A former Panther and two policemen were killed. 
the deaths provoked a response from informant William O'Neill's FBI contact. Mitchell um, became more specific during that time. Um, he wanted to know the locations of weapons caches. He wanted to know if we had explosives. Um, he needed um, he needed to know who was staying at what locations, um, who spent the night where. Um, um, his information didn't change so much as he requested more detail. And uh, I knew why. Um, um, the, the, the shootout on the south side had pretty much laid the foundation within the party Within the Black Panthers, we knew that the police would react some type of way. Expecting police action, the Black Panthers had fortified their office. FBI informant O'Neill was now head of Panther security in Chicago. We, we're very confident that nobody's coming in the front door. Nobody, no gas. Nobody getting on the roof, Jim. I want you to know that. Nobody getting on the roof. We believe in, uh, what is it, fire, cover, and fire. We, yes, we do defend our offices and we do defend our homes. This is a constitutional right. Everybody has it. nothing funny about that. The only reason they get mad at the Black Panther Party when they do it is for the simple reason that we're political. And they don't want to admit this. There are a lot of young organizations around, but we are a political organization. We are an organization that understands that politics is nothing but war without bloodshed and war is nothing but politics with bloodshed. On November 19th, FBI agent Roy Mitchell drew a floor plan of Hampton's apartment based on information supplied by informant O'Neill. On December 4th, at 4.45 in the morning, 14 policemen, nine white and five black, raided the apartment. Deborah Johnson, eight months pregnant, was asleep in the back bedroom next to Fred Hampton. The first thing I remember after Fred and I had went to sleep was being awakened by somebody shaking Fred while we were laying in the bed, saying, Chairman, Chairman, wake up, the pigs are vamping, the pigs are vamping. Uh, this person that was in the room with me kept shouting out, we have a pregnant sister in here, stop shooting. Eventually the shooting stopped and they said we could come out. I remember crossing over Fred and telling myself over and over, be real careful, don't stumble, they'll try to shoot you. Just be real calm, watch how you walk, keep your hands up, don't reach for anything, don't even try to close your robe. When I was in the kitchen, I heard a voice, an unfamiliar voice, say, he's barely alive or he'll barely make it. Then the shooting started back again. Then I heard the same unfamiliar voice say, he's good and dead now. And I, I knew in my mind they were, I assumed they were talking about Fred. And I knew when I left out of there, I couldn't look towards the room. Party leaders Mark Clark and Fred Hampton were killed in the raid. Four of the seven surviving occupants of the apartment were wounded. All were charged with assault and attempted murder. When they locked me up at the police station, I kept begging them for a call, to make one call. I called, I think, the office, the Black Panther office, and I spoke to Bobby Rush, and he told me that Fred was dead. Fred had been killed. And I remember uh, walking out of the office and uh, and looking through a little clearing over on the, ne the next block, which was right in front of uh, the Monroe Street address, and seeing a lot of <clears throat> police cars over there. And uh, at that time, Bobby Rush came to the office. Uh, he had just come from over there, or maybe the coroner's office. In any case, we walked back over there and. Uh, we both were speechless. We just walked through the house and and saw where what had taken place and where he died, and it was it was shocking. And then I was, you know, I just began to realize that the information that I supplied leading up to that moment had facilitated that raid. I knew that indirectly uh, I had contributed, and I felt it, and I felt bad about it. And then I got mad. You know, I had, uh... and then I had to conceal those feelings, which made it worse. I couldn't, 
I couldn't say anything. I just had to continue to play the role. FBI headquarters authorized payment of a $300 bonus to informant William O'Neill for, quote, uniquely valuable services which he rendered over the past several months, unquote. They came in our community just like a thief in the night. And they snacked, they just snatched spray his life just like that. I'd like to say shalom, giving all praises to Yahweh Hashem El Shah. Also give a double honor to the GMS, honor to the Akim, and peace and blessings to your brothers and sisters that listen to Hopeful Elect. And um, um, you, we got to be circumspect. We got to be wise because there's agents amongst us, man. And I was looking at some wayward uh, videos. Um, you got a lot of agents out there, man. You got a lot of agents in this thing, man. Meaning what? They're informants, okay? They're posing to be Israelites, but they're really working for the devil, man. Okay, because Cointel Pro, which that's very real, okay? Um, that was, as you've seen in the clips, you know, that's how they took down the Panther Party. Which ultimately, you know, that was in the will of Yahweh Bashem El Shah, man. That was a carnal movement. That's why that movement fell. But the way they f went down, um, the FBI... Um, starting with Jay, Go Jay Go Gohova, um they had like that guy William O'Neill he's on record saying that he was an informant okay they they infiltrated that group and they're giving him details on how the, the establishment or that organization moved and that's how they was able to kill Fred Hampton who was the um, head of the, Ch the Chicago branch of the Panther Party man and that's why Esau, um, the FBI said that they had a, um, they were keeping their eye on their black extremist groups. They said this in an article last year, 2017, of, around October. And we also know we are, we are part of the Project Megiddo list. Okay, so it's not far-fetched because you had agents in the past, man. And I'm going to get some scriptures on that, man. There's nothing new under the sun. We are living in a time of high betrayals, man. All right? Dudes that you think that's your brother is not, man. Okay? We read the scripture here. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 15. Quick precept. So we get straight to some basic scripts, man. You know, brothers got to be on their guard. It says... And, and you could tell based on the doctrine as well and based on these crazy comments that people put on the comment board, man. A lot of these guys are um, um, agents for Satan, man. Okay, and they try to set you up. All right? And you got a lot of agent provocateurs as well. So you got to watch out, man. All right? The scripture says, Ephesians 5.15, See then that he walks circumspectly. Look around. Look at everybody. Examine people, man. Not everybody that says Shalom is their brother, man. All right, not as fools, but as wise. Okay, and Yahweh Shai gave a commandment to be wise as serpents, be subtile, be cunning. Okay, like the Apostle Paul said, deceivers, but yet true, man. You got to be like a serpent, man, because Esau is being cunning, man. All right, he's being the devil, man. Okay, well, we already know this devil, that's the thing, man, and we know how he moves. And now he moved one of his methods or one of his tactics is COINTELPRO. Okay, and they got niggas doing their bidding. Okay, so bros got to be on their guard, man. And you had some other crazy camps talking about get guns and all that, man. And that's why the Panthers fell, man. Because like I said before, that was a carnal movement, man. What did the Apostle Paul say? Romans 13 verse 1. It says, let every soul be subject unto the higher power. You have to be subject to the higher power. Who's the higher power right now? Well, let me read on. For there's no power but the Most High. The powers that be ordained are of the Most High. So Esau's ruling. Scripture says he's the end of the world. Okay? Scripture says the earth is given into the hand of the wicked. It was given to him. All right? How we know that too? Daniel prophesied of all the kingdoms. America is and NATO is the last leg of the Roman Empire. This is their time. Their time is coming to an end. You have to be subject or underneath the rule. Because you had certain men back then who were zealots. 
wanted to take down the Roman Empire by force. Apostle Paul told him, no, man, you got to be subject to the higher power because it was ordained by the Most High. Whosoever therefore resists the power, like the Panthers tried to do, resists the ordinance of the Most High, and they that shall resist, they that resist shall receive to themselves damnation. That's how that movement felt, okay? A lot of them guys got assassinated, Fred Hampton. Okay, Bobby Hutton got assassinated, man. Okay, a lot of them guys fell into drug dealing, illegal activities, because it was not of Yahweh by Shem Yal Shah, man. You see what I'm saying? Let's read on. It says, For rulers that are terror to good, not terror, for rulers are not a terror to good works, which is what we're doing, are going out there prophesying, but to evil. Will thou do not be afraid to the power? Do that which is good, and thou shalt have the praise of the same. Okay? It says, um, For he is the minister of the Most High to thee for good. But if thou do that which is evil, be afraid. For he beareth not the sword in vain, which is the gun. And the scripture says Esau was blessed with the sword, man. He was blessed his gift. So it was foolish of them to get guns and weapons to try to take the devil down. That's his gift. Okay, that's vanity, man. For he is the minister of the Most High. Esau is a minister of the Heavenly Father, whether he knows it or not. Okay? The Most High is using him on the left hand. Okay? A revenger to execute wrath upon him that doeth evil. So the scripture says, Psalm 17, 13, the wicked is thy sword. The Most High used the sword, Esau, to bring us down for our disobedience. And you have to be subject to that power. Okay? Now, I don't mean every law Esau passed, we just listen to it. If it's against the Heavenly Father, we're not going for it, man. Period, man. That's the ultimate power that we're subject to. Is Yahweh by Shimei Yahweh man. Yahweh the Most High and His Son, Yahweh Shad. And one of the things they're going to try to pass in these last days is a microchip and we ain't taking that because that's against the ordinance of the heavenly father but the scripture says that what he's not a terror to good works which is what we doing prophesying and teaching all right so like i said man this is spiritual man that's why yahweh shai said this john 10 and 1 It says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that entereth not by the door into the sheepfold, but climbeth up some other way, the same is a thief and a robber, man. You can't come no other way, man. The only way you can get salvation is through who? Verse 7. Then Yahweh Shai said unto them again, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep, man. Verse 9. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved, and shall go in and out and find pasture. You have to go through Yahweh Shai. Okay, the Panthers try to do their own thing, you know, self-defense and have, you know, create jobs and education and housing for our people. Nah, man. <laughs> That's not the will of the Most High. The will of the Most High is for you to believe on His Son, okay? And to gather the elect, man. That's it. And when that happens, we're going to be saved and delivered. That's it, man. So that's why that movements fell. But like I said, you had agents back then. Matter of fact, when Yahweh Shai healed, um, brought Lazarus back from the dead, you had niggas running back to the Pharisees and Sadducees, man. Let me get to the next chapter. And the Pharisees and Sadducees were, were working for who? The Romans. Okay? They were under the leadership of the Romans, man. The Romans gave them that power seat. That's why they didn't want to believe on the Messiah, even though they knew he was the guy. Let me read John chapter 11. This is after he healed Lazarus. Then it said, verse 45, Then many of the Jews which came to Mary had seen the things which Yahweh Shai did, believed on him. So after they saw him bring Lazarus back from the dead, a lot of people believed on the Lord. But this is the point. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Yahweh Shai had done. They ran back to the Pharisees and Sadducees, man. They were being informants for the Pharisees and Sadducees. Okay? And you got that same thing going on today. A lot of these guys you think are, you know, like these other wayward camps teaching bugged out doctrines. A lot of these guys are um agents, man. Set up by the devil Esau, man. 
underneath 501c3 charters okay that's what they teach the market to be seen to chip and uh you know like iscpk shooting at the gun range what are you guys doing man okay that's carnal man so like i said you had ages back then and the apostle paul also mentioned that too galatians 2 and 4 it's another battle he had with the pharisees who try to put the um galatians under subjection underneath the laws of moses and they themselves weren't even keeping it this way he said galatians chapter 2 verse 4 let me start from one then 14 years i went up again to jerusalem with barnabas and took titus with me also and went up by revelation and communicate with them that the gospel i preached unto gentiles but probably to them which were of reputation lest by any means i should run or had run in vain but neither titus who was with me being a greek was compelled to be circumcised and that because of false brethren unawares brought in who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Yahweh Shai Mashiach that they might bring us into bondage man. you had this going on back then the Apostle Paul said man certain men crept in underwear to what to spy out their liberty and to bring them in bondage man and you got that in this sense as well man okay you got certain men that set up by Esau to try to infiltrate certain groups and they, they relay information back man that's why, man, brothers got to be wise, man. And we know the chief agent was who? Judas Iscariot. I'm not going to make this less long. I'm going to jump to the point. Okay? We all know Judas Iscariot, man. Who was a zealot. Okay? Which is exactly what the Panthers are. Zealots, man. Carnal men, man. But what happened to Judas Iscariot, man? Okay? He killed himself, man. And ultimately, that's going to happen to all of you guys, man. Okay? The Most High is going to judge you, man. Okay, let me read Judas Iscariot's end. Okay, and this is gonna happen to the rest of you guys, man. It says, When the morning was come, all the chief priests and elders of the people took counsel against Yahweh Shai to put him to death. And when Yahweh Shai, what he went through is gonna happen again, okay, to us. All right, men that's next to you that you thought was your brother gonna end up handing you over. All right, and when they had bound him, they led him away and delivered him to Pontius Pilate, the governor. Then Judas, which had betrayed him, when he saw he was condemned, repented himself and brought him again to the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests and elders, saying, I have sinned and that I have betrayed the innocent blood. And they said, What is that to us? See thou to that. And he cast down the piece of silver in the temple and departed and went out and hanged himself. Okay? He tried to get the money back. They said, We don't want that money back, man. And guess what? He hanged himself. He killed himself. Man. Okay? So what's the penalty for you agents, man? You all gonna die, man. Every last one of you, man. Okay, that's being, uh, that's doing your master's bidding. Okay? So like we said, COINTELPRO is very real. They got their agents out here spying brothers out, writing wayward comments. Okay? Probably spying at you at the camp. Some members might be even in your camp. All right? You got a lot of these uh fake camps set up. You know, these fake channels, dudes teaching wayward doctrines. You know, we got to be wise in these times, man. Not everyone that says shalom or even call on the name of the Lord is a brother, man. You got to examine everybody. And like the Apostle Paul said, I'm going to close it out in this precept here. 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 1. He said, Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord, Yahweh Shai, may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you yeah man we got to pray that the word continue to keep going out because you see esau is starting to clamp down a lot of content okay and the famine of the word is, is going to come and that we may be delivered from unreasonable and wicked men okay and all these guys is doing that being informants they are unreasonable and they're wicked men especially these jakes man that's doing that man because this is your salvation but you want to side with the enemy. It says, for all men have not faith. And for you to be carnal like that, join Esau, that means you have no faith, man. But the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. And we have confidence in the Lord touching you that he both do and will do the things which we command you. And if the Lord direct your hearts in the love of the Most High and the patient waiting for the Mashiach. So we're patiently waiting for Yahweh Shah to make his second coming. That's what we about. We ain't about no guns and 
trying to set up no revolution um, carnally, man. This is a spiritual revolution, okay? We wait for Yahweh Shah to come back. So that must say, giving all praise Yahweh Shemiel Shah, Shalom.